everybody, thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I'll be looking at a book that's very special to me, and I get the sense that this is a special book to a lot of people. I know Brandon Graham loves it, and a lot of other people that I've talked to love this book. Um, I just got this new expanded edition of Jiro Taniguchi's The Walking Man. Both 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 of these copies are from Fanfare Pont and Mon. Uh, we met these guys at Comic Con, they're they're super super nice people, and they really care about what they're doing and producing quality work. Um, and I got I got I have a few of their Jiro Taniguchi things, but as time goes by and I have money, I, I got to get all of them because not only do I love his work, but the job that um, Fanfare Pokemon does on on these books is amazing. But uh, I've had this this copy of the book forever. This this book really changed. I mean, it really like made me er, like 180 on what I was doing with comics. I think this was probably the book that led me to um, quitting pursuing comics for a profession, it, and not not in a bad way. It's just that it changed my mind so much about the kind of things I wanted to do in comics. Um, that just the absolute like simplicity and beauty that he captures, like his view of the world that he captures in this book. It was so impactful on me, and I started to realize that the comics, the kind of comics I wanted to make, probably were never going to sell very well, and I didn't ever want to have to compromise that. And so that's why I went and became an educator. And you know, finally, now all these years later that I've got the full time job, I can go back to focusing on you know, as as I have the limited free time I have, making the kind of comics I want. And if my memory serves me correct, that really all started with with this copy of the, the Walking Man. So really excited to get a nice hardcover version of it. And it says expanded edition. So I was like, oh my God, there's some more stories in there that I haven't seen. I was really excited. Um, there are a couple of stories in there. I don't think there's any new Walking Man stories. I would, I didn't go check them all. Um, but there's three stories in the back of this that aren't this main character. They're just kind of related stories. So... That's cool. That's some new things. The other big difference is, let me see if I can find find the bookmark page here. Uh, there, the other two big differences are the color sequences are in color rather than black and white. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to find the exact one, but this page here. I know I must have tagged this. Here we go. So here it is in color. And I mean, it's his sense of colors as gorgeous as everything else he does. Um, and here it is in the original version in black and white. So that's that's a big difference. And it, it really is. I mean, like as amazing as this illustration is already, seeing it in color is, is massive. The other big difference is this book's printed on glossy paper, which really makes the line work um, jump and feel crisp. But it, it's not as nice as the matte paper that's in here. And even though this is a really, really high quality print, uh, I would say that the images in this version um, seem like they have a little more fidelity to them. Like just the crispness of it is ramped up. And uh, with Taniguchi's art, with how fine his lines are and with the like really fine grain dot patterns that he uses, that makes a, a big difference. And Fanfare Pont and Mon, they do amazing reproduction. They know how to handle black and white line art with screen tones and like you know we talk I, I talk about that I complain about that on the channel a lot and these guys have got it down perfect so uh this version of the walking man this hardcover expanded edition even if you have the original one of have had for a long time really highly recommend going and, and getting this version so if you've never read the walking man before really what it is it's a bunch of short stories about this main character it's never given a name um, he has a wife and in the first couple of stories he meets in a dog and he adopts a dog But really it's just about him taking walks and observing the world and, and slowing down and enjoying life and meeting people and stopping to smell the roses and uh, I know I've heard people talk about that Taniguchi calls these like healing comics I think that they're comics that are meant to like soothe you and heal you and and that's what impacted me when I first read it was that comics didn't have to be about these big explosive things and they didn't even have to have like a kind of arc in the story it, it could just really help you like focus on something that matters focus on something beautiful 
And that it continues to be something I wish I could capture better in, in my work. Um, you know, that seems to be, I don't know, there's something about it. It is, it's healing, it's soothing, it reminds me of what matters. It makes me want to turn off this damn phone and like go outside and enjoy a walk. It's too, too hot right now in Alabama, but as soon as the weather cools down, start going on some hikes. Um, the other thing that I, I remember him having a dog, but I didn't remember that the, the first couple issues kind of formed a story about like him adopting this dog. So that was cool. Uh, as impactful as this book was, I, I, I'll flip through it, but I haven't sat down and read it. You know, I'll look at it for, you know, just inspiration and the images. But it was really nice to go back and revisit it as a reading experience. Um, I, I think I'll, I'll go back and read it again and I'll just read one story at a time. I, I like it enough that I blew through it, but I really do think these are meant to be short stories that you consume them one at a time and really, you know, not blow through it. Like it's easy to read a page like this. Okay. They're out walking and he said that and then you move on, but there's so much beautiful detail in the artwork. Um, it deserves me s slowing down and ch checking out each one individually. One thing that, um, I just, I don't think I knew enough about it when I first read the book to be as impressed with it as I am now is Taniguchi's use of screen tones. Uh, he's got to be like regarded as the master, if if not, like one of the masters, if not the master of screen tone use in Japan, I would imagine. Um, I, I, I've i looked at another book that I got from, from Fanfare Pontemon where he was hired just to do the screen tones and in The Walking Man you can see why especially in this image of the pool I mean the way he gets that effect of the water is just absolutely sublime uh, just the it's astonishing what he's doing with screen tone and as far as I can tell this isn't computer done screen tones they they feel hand done they don't feel like he got a picture of a pool and like ran it through a filter in Photoshop. None of this feels that way to me. And when I'm looking at the dates on uh, the publication, like the initial publication of these stories, it starts in 1992 and goes up to 2015. And I, I think 2015 is probably some of these later stories. Uh, so these, these early ones I assume were made in the early 90s. And as far as I know, there wasn't tech yet to be doing this kind of thing with the screen tones. I mean, maybe this is all digital, I don't know. He gets really crazy, fine, precise, like straight lines on everything too, but it all feels very hand done. I have no idea how he's accomplishing this, even knowing more about screen tones, but the, the subtlety of what he accomplishes, and I doubt it even comes across on screen, but just this right here is one of the, it's probably the most astonishing thing I've ever seen done with screen tone. It's just absolutely phenomenal. And that's all throughout the book. Um, so he seems to be a real, real master of that. This story here, uh, he runs into an old guy fishing. And um, he's talking about like the old guy is basically like retired and has time to slow down. And this guy says, uh, the, the fisherman says, understand, I rushed around enough in my life. So that now it's time to take it life easy, slowly. It's wonderful, isn't it? And this, this character who's obviously like a working businessman is like, slowly, that's it. <laughs> Uh, you know, and then he goes on to just slow down. Um, and he's talking about this brief interlude in daily life where nothing is pressing. I wander along the pathless banks of the river slowly. And that's the kind of thing that just hit Taniguchi's work on the, especially here on um, The Walking Man, just really lands with me. Because that's a lesson I need to be taught over and over and over again. I, you know, like... I'm super busy right now. Like, I guess this is a time in my life where I should be super busy. Um, but I need that. I need to go on a hike and I need a reminder. I also really like this where nothing is pressing. Um, I, I, at some point, wrote an essay ab about uh, as information theory and aesthetics. But one of the things that I talked about there in Luciano is Luciano's Floridi, Luciano Floridi's concept of hyperhistory. And um, I was kind of nitpicking with his definition of it, but I was saying that in my mind, hyperhistory and what is that like everyone's contributing to the historical writing process now. I know it seems like I'm off on a crazy tangent, but bear with me. Like everyone's part of the history writing process now with social media and the internet and Twitter and things like that. Whereas before things went to book, they went to press. 
And so the, the phrase that I came up with when I was writing that, that I'm still very happy with is that it used to be that things went to press. Now everything's always pressing. Um, and I feel like that in life. I feel like with the internet and communication technology and, and stuff like that, everything always is now, 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 now pressing. And so that term of like where nothing is pressing, um, you know, that sounds so nice to me, like prehistory. <laughs> nothing goes to press, nothing's pressing, you're just being, you're just being in the world. And I think that's what Taniguchi captures in here. And that, I, God, I, like, I just, I want that so bad. Um, some other really cool things that he does with the art. Here's a story where the the walking man, he gets bonked in the head by a ball and it breaks his glasses. And um, so this is a really awesome scene. You know, again, really great use of the screen tones and everything where he's staring at a park and everything's blurry. Uh, since I got the LASIK, like it made my vision better, but I haven't gotten like over three months later, I haven't gotten my vision hasn't gotten as good as it was with my glasses on yet. And so this is like, oh yeah, this is how I see the world now. Um, yeah, but I can't wear my glasses anymore because my prescription has changed, it's gotten better. So this is kind of like my day-to-day -day life right now. Anything past like 10 feet kind of looks like this. Uh, so feeling very sympathetic to that as well. And then again, just like the really creative use of his imagery and use of the tones. Uh, where he puts the broken glasses back on and he's got these little, you know, fractured images. I know other people have done stuff like this, but Tan Taniguchi pulls it off with flair. And then to do like a whole drawing that's done just with the tones like that to get the blurry effect. I love it. I, I th It's just so great. He's so good at that. Um, and uh, th this one here is another one where it just kind of reminds me of that, like the value to be found in the world, the things that most people wouldn't think to make a story of. But like those moments that are really like the better moments in life that we should focus on rather than these super dramatic things that we normally make stories out of. He's just walking his dog and like the kids get excited like, hey, the dog's doing a pee pee and he laughs and it's like, oh yeah, you know, they come up and they get to pet the puppy and then they go away. And I don't know, like those are more meaningful. I get way more meaning out of just playing with my dogs and taking them for a walk and things like that. Um, so it's really nice to see someone celebrating that instead of having these big dramatic arcs and all of this crazy shit going wrong in people's lives. Here's another couple just like really awesome full page spreads with really good use of the, the tones. This is definitely me as many nights as I can manage <laughs> soaking, sweating in the tub. Um, so yeah, I, I just love this book even more even more on a revisit than I did initially. It speaks to me even more as I get older and busier. Um, so I think that's the end of The Walking, the walking Man proper. Uh, and I think there may be one, like a quick glance at the, the two kind of chapter lists. I think there's one extra Walking Man story maybe that's been made since. But then in the back, there's these three stories uh, that aren't the, the Walking Man, but they, they're similar in content and vibe. Um, this one is printed in black and white, but it looks like it was probably one of his color pieces. <sighs> but, you know, w with the other color pieces, they print them in color. So then I think, well, this must just be either the best resources they have, like they lost the color, or he did one just in ink wash, which is cool as well. Um, so that's one of the three stories that's in the back. This one here, Tokyo Illusory Journey. This one's very strange to me. This one looks like he must have done it much more recently, and it looks like he's using computers. Um, but it, it may just be that they don't have as good of, uh, like, uh, resources. Like, the original resources aren't there because the printing feels fuzzy, the lines feel gummed up. It's a very strange style uh, for him where he's got all of these, like, heavy blacks put in there, and... Um, it just loses a lot of the elegance of, you know, the, the rest of the book. It feels very clunky and gummed up. And it looks to me like maybe he was doing some of this stuff on the computer and like learning to work with the computer. Like this to me does, it could just be the, that the lines are filled in more, but it doesn't have the same kind of graceful precision that his hand-drawn art has. 
So I wonder if that's done with computers, but it could just be that they didn't have access to the original art on this one. And so it's printed a little thicker and more gummed up. That could be, but I, I will say I don't, I don't like Taniguchi when he's using a lot of black in his artwork. Um, and this more kind of photorealist type of thing he's doing is just, uh, it, like that. It's, it's such a bad rendering of, of cloth. It's almost like too accurate, and so it winds up looking like clumpy and Play-Doh. There's no abstraction that actually makes it feel like cloth. And this boat here looks like a computer rendered kind of effect on a photograph. So I don't know what that one's all about. Um, I don't know what he was trying with that, but I'm, it seems like he abandoned it. And thank goodness for that. Like compared to the grace of you know these kind of clean lines and lots of tone that he's doing, it just doesn't doesn't work for me. But still, a good story. He's a great writer. Um, and then in this last one, you get something and it's kind of like he did a, also a book about the Louvre. It was part of that series of artists doing books about the Louvre. I forget what it's called um, off the top of my head. But this story is similar to that where like a character takes a wrong turn and walks into like a dream or a portal of another life or something. The Louvre book kind of has that same story structure as well. This one's really cool because he starts with the black and white and then goes into this huge color sequence um, and then comes back out into, into the black and white. So that's really fun to see him playing around. Again, I think this is in this collection just because it's a short story and thematically it feels right. So it's like, okay, we'll put that in there because we don't have anywhere else to put it. So I'm super grateful for that. It's like, oh, I get some extra stories I haven't seen before. And, and I get to see him play. And even if I don't like what he's doing in the play, it's nice to see an artist trying stuff out and flexing different muscles. And that's great. So absolutely love this collection. Then they have the cover and you can see... Um, kind of color comparison like the colors in this one are just way better the, the these got too blue and kind of too too yellowy looking or something on here um so yeah that reproduction is really nice and then they've just got these couple other covers that have been obviously used for other editions or something really i mean god he's such a good such a good watercolorist as well such a good colors um so i i just absolutely i, I adore this book it's one of my favorite comics ever um, and probably one of the, the most influential for the path that I've taken in my life, including deciding to quit being a, trying to be a professional comic artist and going being a professor. I think if I remember correct, I can blame that on this book. So absolutely love this expanded edition. If you have an older edition of it, um, please go out and get this edition. It's really great for those of you who can't afford it. Um, and someone who doesn't have it, I've got an extra copy now. So the first person in the in the United States that I can ship this to uh, without spending eight bajillion dollars to ship it overseas, first person that uh, comments and says you want a copy of this one, I will send you a free book, uh, and maybe you can be as impacted by by the, this work as as I was. Um, so yeah, first person in the comments that that wants this copy. Um, please, if, if you have a copy, don't get it just to sell it or something like that. Really, I'd like this to go to someone who's never seen it before. Um, but, you know, I don't know. If, if you choose to be that person, then you're the first one that comments. I'll send it to you anyway. So, first person in the United States that comments, I'll send you uh, this the original copy. And uh, hopefully it's not worth a whole bunch of money or something. But whatever. I've got the version that I want. Um, yeah, so thanks for checking in. Thanks for following along with this one. If you like what we do here on the channel... The two ways to support us that are really helpful. One is Patreon. That's awesome. We have some different tiers there that get people different things. Previews of the books we're working on in the higher tier. There's a there's a tier where you can have a chance to get um, original sketches and stuff like that. And then there's just a the low level tier. Like hey, you know, uh, you get early previews of a lot of the videos that I make, and I, I haven't had time to put them up yet. Um, a lot of the interviews and stuff we do go up a week early or so. So the previews of that kind of stuff for the, the lowest level, you get access to all of our videos. Um, and that helps. That little bit of extra money helps me and Sean get the books that we review, especially Sean. You know, he, uh, he doesn't have a full-time job like I do. So getting him copies, of the, the Patreon helps with that. And then really the best way to help support us is to... Uh, support what Sean's doing with the Living the Line publishing and, um, you know, get the books that he's put out and keep an eye for the ones that he has coming out because there's a lot of good stuff. So we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, 
previews of some of those now. Sala Niyalo, Path of the Shades by Clarence Doss is a really cool ongoing project that Living the Line will be producing. Clarence is a PhD student from Fiji who's studying the myths of Fiji for his doctoral thesis. And part of that study project is that he's producing these comics. They're kind of like Hellboy where there's these little short stories that capture all of these different mythologies. But then he's using that to wrap the project into his doctoral thesis and then provide educational material where people can come to these comics. You know, they don't have to read his PhD thesis. They can come to the comics and get a more consumable version of the mythology of Fiji. House on Fire by Matt Battaglia is a just gorgeous book where Matt's kind of making an emotional response to the, the years of COVID and wrapping that into a sci-fi dystopian future that really the sci-fi dystopian's backgrounded and you're fo focused on the emotional journey of two characters in a really beautiful way. And then that's enhanced by Matt's like really awesome, loose, kind of Paul Popish um, dry brush work. And then Sean and Matt have worked to get this second kind of orange spot color in there that's going to look really, really beautiful and has allowed Matt to use his dry brush technique to add tone to the thing too. So um, with Sean's production technique, this is going to be a gorgeous book with a lot of heart. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. Whoa!